What's up everyone, Sevon here with a new video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys the install of the Willwood Big Brake Kit that I picked up for my 2005 Mini. If you haven't seen the first two videos where I discuss the parts I'll be picking up as well as some of the install of the suspension components, you can watch them somewhere up here. In the first video, if you recall, I, I talked about picking up the Big Brake Kit with the FSL calipers. Those are a really beefy Willwood caliper that uh, has great stopping performance and 13 inch uh, rotors. But uh, after talking to Todd a bit and after discussing with a few of my online buddies, I decided to go with the 11.7 5 inch Willwood track kit. And uh, what that'll do is it comes with the Dynapro caliper, so it's still top loading and race ready. It comes with thick pads, uh, but it'll allow me to run 15 inch wheels in the future, which I'm actually leaning towards. So cheaper tire choices, lighter rotating mass. Uh, all good fun. Shout out to Todd at TCE for helping me pick this kit out. If you're looking to get an affordable Willwood brake kit for your Mini, I highly recommend giving Todd a call or shooting him an email. He's really fast with his responses and he'll lead you in the right direction as he did with me. Since the weather's not really on my side today, I'm gonna be doing a voiceover of the actual install, but I'll show you guys the steps step by step as well as linking the tools and parts you will need for this install uh, in the description box. There's like a weird T50 Torx that wasn't in my socket kit as well as um, some Loctite, which I never use. So yeah, let's get to the install. All right, so first make sure to pop the hood and take this guy off. Right here, take the cap off. What that'll do is allow you to uh, push the brake pads in and that way we can force the caliper off after we uh, loosen a few bolts So grab a screwdriver and put it in between the pad and the caliper and just force the piston back in Oh, That was really easy to do because we opened the fluid reservoir. So after we've gotten the piston loose We're gonna take off these little dust boots right here there's a dust boot right here, and there's the same type on the bottom. We want to just pry them off using the same screwdriver. Take the other one off the bottom. Just take this one off too. This one off the so after taking off the two dust boots, there are going to be two M7 hex uh, bolts. We're going to use this to take them out. Now we should just be able to lift the caliper out. And the brake pads with it. and just let it hang there. So after moving the caliper out of the way, we're going to uh, remove the two bolts that hold the caliper bracket in place. Now these are on real tight. You're gonna need a breaker bar and a 16 millimeter socket to take them off. And that should just be it. Move that away and the rotor should just slip right off. Now in my case, I have this little wheel adapter hub for my BBS wheel, so I gotta slide that off first. Give me just some force. There we go. And the rotor is off. Okay, so next up, we gotta remove this dust shield. Um, this does not get reused when you put the Willwood BBK on, so this will have to be removed. It's gonna get in the way. Um, it uses a T25 Torx bit to Take it off and it helps to have a small extension just uh, to give you some room to work. All right, so if you bought the same Woolwood uh, brake kit that I bought, you're going to get a new slotted rotor as well as a hat that sits on top of it. You're going to take the flatter side, the larger flat side, so this is the inside of it. You're going to take the other side and uh, mount the, the hat to it using these bolts right here. These bolts are the ones that are labeled on the box 
bolt kit hat rotor and the part number is 230-12177. So put all these bolts in, you don't want them too tight because you're gonna have to remove them in a second to add some Loctite and torque them to 25 foot pounds. They use a T40 uh, Torx bolt, so make sure you have the proper socket for that. Again, I'll have a link to the sockets and all the tools you'll need in the description. So just double check that you have all the proper tools before starting this job. So you're gonna to want to remove each one of these one by one. So you remove this one, apply some Loctite to the threads, torque it to 25 foot pounds, and then move to the opposite side one, do the same thing, and just do it one by one until you've uh, covered all of the bolts. And then you'll be done with this assembly and we can move on to um, the actual bracket that's gonna hold up the caliper. So this is what it should look like when you've got all of them in. One thing to note with these rotors is that they have an arrow on them, this one right here. And uh, you wanna make sure that the wheel that you're gonna install these onto, um, this arrow is facing the direction that the rotor is going to move in when the car's moving forward. So in this case, this rotor is going to go on the passenger side in the front. Okay, now we're back at the car. We're gonna install these metal sleeves through the caliper mounting holes. Uh, the original size is too large, so these sleeves are gonna downsize the hole and allow the new bolts to not have any wiggle room uh, after we install the new caliper bracket. So make sure not to forget the washer and now we're just going to slide the bolt through the new sleeve that we installed. Do this for both the top and the bottom. Okay now we're approaching the part of the big brake kit install that most people have questions on and that's centering the caliper to the rotor. We'll be using these little shims. If you bought the Willwood kit, you'll be getting a lot of these spacers inside of the box. You wanna make sure you pick the proper sized one and uh, you can determine the size by just putting it up to this little spot right here and uh, making sure the circle lines up. It shouldn't be protruding from outside of the mounting hole. In my case, this is an R53 JCW, so it's a 2005 model mini. So stacking three of them on the top and three of them on the bottom. And those are the only shims I ended up using for the total install. Next up, we'll be taking the caliper mounting bracket and being careful to put the proper side in towards the vehicle so it sits flush with the spindle. And we'll just be screwing in the new bolts that we installed. Don't torque these bolts down too tight just yet since we're still in the test fit stage of the brake install. Uh, afterwards, we're gonna be taking this apart and applying some Loctite to a few of the bolts. So just torque it down enough to where it'll be stable and won't move while we're test fitting. Now we'll be mounting the rotor assembly that we assembled earlier. Just line up the holes and finger tighten a few lug nuts to keep it in place. Afterwards, we'll be installing the caliper over this rotor and seeing if everything fits right. If the spacing is off, we'll have to change the number of shims that we installed, uh, either removing them or adding some more. Uh, depending on your vehicle, uh, I don't know if this differs between models, but you may have to use a different number of shims than I did. All right, so after mounting the rotor to the hub, um, you want to test your caliper. Now, this isn't the standard colored caliper uh, that comes from Willwood. If you're interested in painting yours like I painted mine to a lime green, uh, you could do so with the G2 uh, painting kit. It's an epoxy, so it won't wear off as easily as something like a spray can would. It's easier to apply the spray paint, but uh, this will last longer, especially if you plan on tracking the car. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you're interested in painting. It's a really simple process. Uh, you just sand down the caliper, you spray it over with some brake cleaner, and then you go through light coats of the G2 paint until you get uh, your desired finish. Uh, this is what mine ended up looking like, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the finish. So we're gonna mount it on here, like so. And tighten it down with the included locking nut and uh, washer. So the instructions would tell you to put uh, one of these shims in between the caliper and the caliper bracket um, for initial testing. Since I've already done the other side, I know that for the R53 Mini, you actually uh, don't need any of these for centering the caliper. I used four on the other, um, I used four shims for the other side, but this one actually doesn't require any, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use these. I'm just gonna double check my fitment and uh, show you guys how the caliper should be centered. So after you've got the caliper on the rotor uh, and it's attached to the caliper bracket, 
you take the included locking nut and the washer and you just slide it over. Since we're just doing a test fitment, you don't want them too tight, but you do want them snug so you can see where the caliper actually sits. So what you want to look for when centering the caliper to the rotor is this gap right here. So there's one right there and one right there. You want that to be centered and those two gaps to be equal. And uh, what it took in my case is three of those shims right here. So three between the caliper bracket and the spindle and none between the caliper and the caliper bracket. Next up you'll want to insert the brake pads so we can double check the clearance of those. Take this guy right here, slide that through. Alright, once it's locked in place, you want to make sure that the top of your brake pads are level with the top of the rotor. So, in this case, we're all good to go. If you found that your brake pads weren't level with the rotor, the top of the rotor, you would have to add uh, shims to. Uh, you would have to add shims between um, your brake caliper and the caliper bracket. So after you've gotten this uh, assembly set up, you take off these wheel studs, mount your wheel, and put the studs back on it, and then just rotate the wheel and make sure that there aren't any clearance issues. Uh, with the caliper and uh, the spokes of your wheel. Hopefully uh, you check the measurements beforehand using um, the guide that Willwood has. If you haven't uh, bought your kit yet or you just have your kit and you haven't installed it yet and want to double check before you get everything assembled, um, I'll put a link down to that in the description below as well. Uh, just do the measurements. You would have to check the distance. I believe it's the center of your wheel. So you would flip this wheel over you do the measurement from the center of the hub to about four to seven inches I believe uh, double check on the on the guide don't take my word for it but you would check the distance between that and then the height from that point to uh, the center of the spoke and that will give you the clearance of this guy so after you've confirmed that everything fits and there aren't any clearance issues go ahead and take off um, everything that you had on before including the rotor and uh, we're going to take these bolts off, put some Loctite on them, and then retighten them and tor torque them to uh, 65 foot pounds. After we've tightened everything down with Loctite, reinstall the caliper, and I've already went ahead and reinstalled the brake line. Uh, it's really simple. All you need to do is hold this top bolt, uh, hold this top nut, and uh, twist the bottom loose, and then just replace it, attach it to the back of this caliper as well. Um, the only thing that you could possibly mess up with this is uh, the routing. Make sure that you've got nice smooth bends and uh, this is facing upwards. So yeah, just make sure it's nice and smooth because your fluid's going to be pumping through. You don't want any weird bends or angles. Alright guys, so that's about it for the install. Uh, after you've done all of the fittings and checked the clearances, made sure that everything is nice and tight, you'll want to flush out the old brake fluid with the new one. So. You'll start from the right rear, go to the left rear, and then front right, and then left front. Um, and when you're doing it with the Woolwoods, the process is a little different since you'll have four bleeder valves. So you'll want to start off with the outer side first, the outer top, and then the inner top. You don't mess with the bottom ones. Those are just for alternative mounting um, solutions, and since we've mounted them as they, uh, as they should be, for our case, you just use the top too. After you've changed out the brake fluid, you want to double check and make sure your pedal is firm and that it stays firm. It doesn't sink after holding it for a while. And uh, you follow the Willwood instructions for properly testing the brakes after the car's down on the wheels and uh, that you bed in the brakes properly. That usually involves going up to speed and then slamming on the brakes. Make sure you're in a safe location, of course. And yeah, I think that's it, guys. If you have any questions or concerns, leave them down in the comments below. As I stated earlier, I'll have a parts list as well as tools required and links to where you can buy those in the video description below. 
Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. If you loved it, consider smashing that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.